Negotiating Water, the case of Jordan and Israel. The Earth's surface is 97% water and the majority of this water is salt water, unsuitable for human consumption and other needs. Fresh water, suitable for use, makes up only 25% of the water on Earth. This is very important for countries because the population is growing while water is depleting. Water has always been an important resource in the Middle East. There is no doubt that there is lack of water resources in the Middle Eastern region. Water levels are dropping and the water supply does not reach satisfactory levels. The water usage has reached the limit of its availabilities in Jordan and Israel, and international tensions over lack of water are increasing. In 1964, Israel began drawing water from the Jordan River. This is what you can call the beginning of a water war. In 1990, King Hussein of Jordan stated that water is the only issue that could take Jordan into war with Israel. Therefore, it was not surprising that Jordan participated in the Madrid Conference on October 31, 1991. Americans and Russians assembled in Madrid. Gorbachev next to me, we walked into this room in Madrid and there across the table sat Arabs and Israelis. The diplomatic efforts was in the form of bilateral and multilateral talks between Israelis and the Arab court countries. According to Dr. Haddad-Din, who is the Minister of Water and Irrigation of Jordan and Chief Jordanian Negotiator of Water, Energy and Environment in the Middle East Peace Process. Dr. Haddadin quoted that those multilateral talks were not meant to resolve disputes, but were meant to enhance the environment of the bilaterals. A working group was formed in 1991 of high-level officials, among them for Jordan, Dr. Abdus Salam Ajari and the Ambassador Fayez Tarona, for Israel, Ambassador Yakim Rubinstein, Secretary of Government and later Attorney General. At the beginning of the negotiations, the groups dealing with water, energy, and environment came together and dealt jointly with the three topics. Later on, the Jordanians requested negotiating each of the three topics separately. This was mainly because Israel has the upper hand in the water issue. The negotiations were not easy. The Jordanian negotiators wanted to recover whatever water Israel has been using beyond their equitable share. The Israeli Prime Minister's interest was in keeping what water they were using. As the parties wanted to cooperate, they established a common language to discuss the common agenda. The negotiators established a text that contained two issues under the water item. The first one is securing the rightful water shares of the two sides. And the second one is to search for ways to alleviate water storage. This text, or what is called single negotiated text, was the first common text approved between the Israeli and the Jordanian delegations. The text of the common agenda was a good starting point and helped in supporting the progress of the negotiations over the agenda items. On October 27, 1992, the two heads of the delegations agreed to engage in discussion to finalize the common agenda. However, the talks were suspended when due to the 416 Palestinian activists were moved from Gaza and the West Bank to the No Man's Zone in South Lebanon at Marj il Zahur. The Jordan-Israeli Peace Treaty was signed on October 26, 1994, near the Jordan and Israel border, including Article 6, which addresses the issues of water allocation, water storage, water quality, and groundwater. With dignity. This is peace with commitment. This is our gift to our peoples and the generations to come. On June 2, 1994, King Hussein of Jordan announced that Palestine has its own men and they are capable of defending their rights. 
The working committee then decided to negotiate water issues only for the share of the East Bank and to move the negotiations from Washington, D.C. to the region. The agreement resulted on forming a permanent joint water committee. It's made of three members from each country and sets its own procedures and agenda. The agreement over water had two sections, agreement on cooperation and agreement on rightful allocation. The agreement on cooperation section includes four items. A. Development of existing new water sources. B. Prevention of contamination of water resources. C. Assistance in alleviation of shortages. And D. Transfer of information, joint research, and development of water-related subjects. The second section of agreement on rightful allocation includes three items. A. Israel would supply Jordan with 25 to 30 million cubic meters of water annually for the Tarabiya Lake until the desalinization plant is installed in 2000. B. Groundwater from the Jordanian wells that were used by the Israeli farmers would stay used for Israel. In return, Israel would pump 10 million cubic meters of the Tuberia water. Jordan and Israel have an agreement towards management of water resources. This includes 20 million cubic meters of Yarmouk water will be sorted by Israel in the winter and released to Jordan in the summer. 10 million cubic meters will be released from the Tabaria Lake outside the summer season for Jordan until the construction of the desalinization plant. After 47 years of conflict, Jordan and Israel finally made peace. The water-related diplomatic efforts have two important outputs. The first one is that the parties agreed they both faced water scarcity. The agreement therefore states the parties recognize that their water resources are not sufficient to meet their needs. And the second is that the agreement handled protecting water quality. However, the water story is not over. Yet. Jordan has closed Al Adasiya Dam, which feeds the King Abdullah Canal, as a way to push Israel into finding a tangible solution to the polluted water in El Yarmouk River. Israel violates the peace agreement with Jordan by pumping polluted water into the Yarmouk River, which polluted thousands of cubic meters of water off the King Abdullah Canal, which is used for irrigation and drinking after being purified in the Zaid Water Treatment Center. Water. This is not the first time that Israel pumps polluted water into the Jordanian River. In 1998, Israel pumped polluted water which poisoned dozens of Jordanian citizens. At that time, the Jordanian government was forced to resign due to the crisis. Maybe this is one of the reasons why Jordan's ties with Israel turned cold. Is it possible that, as water was the primary reason behind the peace treaty, be the reason leading to a coming war? The National History Day theme this year is Debate in Diplomacy and History, Successes, Failures, and Consequences. Our project relates to this year's theme because it focuses on diplomacy as a way to resolve problems around shared water resources. This project demonstrates how negotiations between Jordan and Israel not only resulted in signing the peace treaty, but also resolved in the conflict around water. We showed that negotiations were successful when both parties had the intentions and were willing to reach an agreement. However, intentions only are not enough. Successful diplomacy needs experienced negotiators, patience from all parties in offering compromises when it is needed. As the case of Jordan and Israel, when all issues related to water were addressed in a coherent manner, the agreement about water was established. More importantly, our project shows that the challenging part is not generating agreement, but to maintain it through mutual respect and good intentions. Only agreements can last.